I ain't never really started my place off in this kind of mood. You know the kind of mood where you like, like I waited for certain people to come here. Like, you know, I was amp, 50 came through. I was amp, you know, Tip came through. But I've been waiting for you to come back through. My you girl have. is here, Miss Melanie you? Fiona. I'm great. Really? I'm great. I ain't asking you how you look. I ain't asking you how the project going. I'm saying, how are you really? Like I'm great. I'm the best I've ever been. I'm the happiest I've ever been. Uh, my album is out. Right. And I'm back here with you. You know why? I'm, seriously, why I'm asking you though how you been? Because you have been working, and, and like seriously, like I haven't seen you. It was March 30th. If you was here. I still remember the date. Dang. And we talked a lot about you know things. That was that our was, first date. That was our first date. Oh. And you know, are you wait, it's the 30th. Oh, we have an anniversary to celebrate. And Megas, you know what I really like about dating you? You don't even make me pay all the time. No. That's what I like Since about. Since 2009. <sighs> That's what right. that now I can feel that. Yeah. But you've been working. I have. And I mean busy, busy. All the time. How does it? Is it what you thought it would be? Um, it, it's, it is. Nothing I expected because I had no idea what to expect. Right. You put out an album, you're like, okay, I hope people like it, but there's a lot that goes on it with it, like promo and, and touring and performing and no sleep and working long right. hours, overwork and underpaid, that's what I say. Right. So, but I mean, it's it's the time of my life. I get to live out my dream. I'm, I'm really loving it. Even the things that I hate, I'm still loving it. Well, give me something that you hate. What do you hate? I hate living out of a suitcase. Really? I do. I love traveling, uh -huh. but I hate living out of a suitcase. But seriously, living out of a suitcase, though, you get to, you got to get to shop a lot. Yeah, but then, see, the problem is is that when you have a suitcase, you're, you're limited to oh. what you can take because you've got weight restrictions, you've got all these things. You have to pack smart. Right. So, you know, sometimes when you live out of your suitcase, you're taking the maximum of what you can take, and that doesn't leave much room for shopping. Then you got to ship, you got FedEx boxes, and it's, it's not as easy as you think. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I want to get into, because last time we were talking about it coming, and now it's here, the bridge. The bridge. And, and when you were here before, we got a taste of Give It To Me Right. Yes. And we were really, really, really like, oh my God, this, this could be something special. But then all of a sudden, coming across the desk, here comes It Kills Me. There it is. And I don't know whether somebody has opened the door to a back room and let other people realize you were there or something, but now we in, we in like, you mentioned Melanie Fiona, it's like, oh, like I love her music. Oh, she's saying what I've been wanting to say. I'd be like, I didn't see this girl for a minute and you wasn't ever saying nothing like that. How does that part feel to get that love from, you know, a fan? That is actually the best part, I think, of what I do. You know, it's great to know how well your record is doing, but when you see the people are emotionally attached to your music, right? and you know that they relate to you, like, I mean, I've been there. I've right. been heartbroken, I've been in bad situations, and I know people go through that. Right. So for me, it was like to know that people are actually relating and feeling like I'm a voice for them, right. this song helps them express what they haven't been able to say, and helps them feel better. Like, you don't know how many girls come up to me and say, you helped me get through a breakup. Wow. When I hear that, that is the best feeling. That is absolutely the best feeling, and especially coming from, from women and, and young girls, like even teenagers. Wow, so you, great. you're almost like a therapist of sorts. You know what? I, I promise you, I always had a desire to do some sort of social work. Right. And I knew that it's a tough thing to do because you take people's problems home with you at the end of the day. But right. I know that I, people always call me like I've, I, like I've lived like five lifetimes. Like people ask me, <laughs> or, I, people ask me about their marriages. I've never been married, never been engaged, don't got these kids. Right. I'm like, why are you asking me how to raise your kids? But you write no songs. I, but I realized that that's what it is. It's the music therapy. For myself and the rest of the world. So something, that's good. something else I noticed about you too, and and I've, I've, I guess you're getting a, you're getting a lot of work to do like different things. Like I just saw you at the Thanksgiving thing in Detroit. That's right. It's obvious that people are seeing some things that not only your immediate circle saw, but that Steve Rifkin saw. And I know you mentioned this before. He didn't want to change you. No. Nope. And so you're getting to do things like you're singing some classic stuff that you got to know how to sing or you got to know what you're doing to be involved in. So so. So I guess what my question is, to get those kind of accolades, or to have people say, she's talented enough for me to say, I want her to be involved in not only her own stuff, because I've been going to do their own stuff, right. but to be involved in like these bigger scale things, and you know, how does that part feel? That is, uh, it's, it's a real honor. Most recently with the NFL halftime show for Thanksgiving Day, they were doing the Motown Review, right. being signed to SRC Universal Motown. I am a part of the Motown family, so. When I got asked to be a part of it, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. It's going to be a great thing. I wonder what they're going to have me sing. And when right. I was chosen to sing, I'll be there by the Jackson 5. Wow. I was like, they have chosen me to honor Michael Jackson after he's passed. That's a huge honor. And I was also chosen to sing the national anthem. So wow. it's, it's, it is 
an honor. It is something that I feel very proud to be able to say that I've been chosen to do, something that I take very seriously right. and appreciate the opportunity and just will never forget the people who really vouched for me and said, you know, we trust her to do these types of things. We feel like she's the artist to honor these types of artists and countries and things like that. So, right. I mean, I feel like it's a great place for me to say this is where I began. And I just feel like if this is where I'm starting, there's endless possibilities where I can go. So what? So what's next? I mean, we got we got the album out. <clears throat> it kills me. It's still going this way. So I I mean, are we even looking at another single? Are we just, are we looking no, at? No, yeah. We're on the road. I know that. On the road promo is is getting crazy, which is really great because it's towards the end of the year now, and most you know companies, radio stations, everybody kind of shuts down. Right. But there's been a, an increased demand for me now to go do radio shows and promo and things like that. So it's it's been really, really good. Working is always a good thing in this right. industry. Um, but, you know, definitely It Kills Me is going up. I'm hoping it's going to be a, a number one record. It would be my dream come true. Wow. To say I had a number one record here in the States. Um, it's already top ten at Billboard, so that's doing great. And um, just keep going. Just keep going. But definitely we want to... We want another single, no. for sure. Let me ask you a question, now, because I know, you know, here in the States, and we, people forget how big the world is. And you having, you know, Canadian background, French, and different different things, and just makes such a great mix. I, <laughs> I want to stay focused today. How is the buzz around the world? You know, it is, um, it's something very hard to keep track of, because when I get so involved in the U.S. market, I initially broke overseas. Right. So... I, I was over there a lot. Like, I was over in Europe. I was in the UK. I was in Germany and France and Italy and doing it, all these things. Right. Now that I'm back in the States and then I'm hearing what's going on overseas without me even being there is incredible. I have a number one record in Switzerland. Wow. I'm, I'm top of the pop charts over in the UK. Well, I haven't been to Switzerland. I've been, I used to live in the UK, though. So I'm just... Switzerland is, is probably one of my favorite places that I've been. I'm working it's, on our trip, though, kind of. That's is it a honeymoon? Is it like a vacation? If you want to do vacation, vacation first, you just lovers vacation. <laughs> okay, so you know it, it's it's a it's an amazing feeling, right? To feel and the and the funny thing is that single that's number one in Switzerland is not even the single that's over here. It's a different single. Oh wow! So it's a it's a really great thing to feel like you know different songs on my album are having different lives places, and that's just gonna have you know more longevity and more. It's diverse. It's more diverse for me to be able to get out there and share the music. Right. So internationally, it's going great. My next conquest is definitely Asia. Uh-oh. Yeah, we want to go for Asia. But it, it's it's great. I mean, not many new artists get to say they have their album released in several territories on their right. first album. So it's good. 